use the term that this is nothing short of treasonous because it is a betrayal of the nation. He is giving aid and comfort to the enemy, and it needs to stop. And Mr. Trump needs to understand that there are going to be consequences for him, too. The New York Times reporting tonight, U.S. Attorney John Durham is, quote, examining former CIA Director John Brennan, asking for emails, call logs, and documents relating to his role in how the Russia investigation began. Joining me now, Fox News contributors Leslie Marshall and Mark Thiessen. Welcome to you both. Hi, Shannon. Mark, are you there? I'm here. Okay, yes. good. All right. Um, so let me let me read through some of this. There is uh, the New York Times talking about this, uh, talking about there's going to be the presumption or the appearance that the president is using the DOJ to go after his enemies. It says the president has long attacked Mr. Brennan as part of his narrative about so-called deep state cabal of Obama administration officials who tried to sabotage his campaign. And Mr. Trump has held out Mr. Durham's investigation as a potential avenue for proving those claims. Marty, where, where do you think this is going? Well, first of all, I think that's ridiculous. John Durham is a career prosecutor of unimpeachable, uh, unimpeachable character, and I use that term in intentionally. Uh, he is a he he is the guy that the Obama administration, Eric Holder, turned to to investigate the CIA interrogation program. And despite the fact that the administration was opposed to the program, he found that they had committed no crimes. So he's not going to. Free, Donald Trump doesn't control John Durham. John Durham is going to do what John Durham wants. And uh, quite frankly, I'm glad that he has John Brennan in his crosshairs because it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Uh, John Brent, there are a lot of people out there who falsely accused Donald Trump of, co of conspiring with Russia. But the worst of the worst were the people who had access to classified intelligence and who used their positions to suggest that they knew something that we didn't, that there was really secret evidence that Donald Trump colluded with Russia. And that's exactly what John Brennan did. He's called him a traitor. He said he aided and abetted the enemy. He said he was in Putin's pocket, that he was a Russian agent. Uh, and it turns out when the Mueller report came out, none of that was true. The, the Americans were Americans took those charges seriously because someone serious like John Brennan, who's a CIA director, said them. And it turned out none of it was true. And so they want to get to the bottom of it. How? And that's what John Durham is investigating. How did this country spend two years and tens of millions of dollars chasing a conspiracy theory? And I think every American wants to know the answer. Well, I don't think John Brennan is worried, at least not publicly. <laughs> Here is what he said. I think we have it. Okay, uh, this is what he said. I will tell you. I will read it for you. I will not try to imitate You'll his voice. You'll say it and much then, better than and he And listen, did. this is not <laughs> post the report that he's now in trouble, but this is just the speculation that he would be interviewed by Durham. Here's what he said. Yep. I feel good about what it is, as we did an intelligence community, and I feel very confident and comfortable with what I did. So I have no qualms whatsoever about talking with investigators who are going to be looking at this in a fair and appropriate manner. Leslie, should he have anything to be worried about? He should only have something to be worried about if he uh, lied when he was under oath. And uh, quite frankly, I don't think so. If you look at what the CIA said, the CIA said to the FBI regarding the dossier, and I quote, they said not to rely on the dossier because it was, quote, as credible as an Internet rumor. Mm. Uh, so, so, But I will say, Mark, you know what? I was agreeing with you at the beginning, and I was a little worried, but then all of a sudden you, you just, uh, because if we're going to investigate people, if we're going to investigate people because we don't like them or we don't like what they've said, I've got a list of ex-boyfriends we can Ooh. start with. Um, but that, that's not what's going on here, Shannon. What is going on is if you're investigating the investigators and you have a conversations between uh, then FBI Director James Comey and uh, then CIA Director Brennan, it, it, it's obvious to me that they would include this within the scope. I don't think they're going after Brennan. I think they're trying to be thorough in their investigation. Well, Mark, you know at points there have been some speculations about the finger pointing. Comey, Brennan, yep. who's going to take the fall for what? Um, what do you think about Brennan and whether he should be worried. I mean, he says, listen, whatever I've done, I'm, I'm happy to put it out there and it's all about board. You know, James Comey thought he was going to come out fine in the inspector general's report and it didn't turn out that way. Uh, you know, he, he he said a lot of things that were not true and the FBI now has had, we just had the FISA judge mm -hmm. ex excoriate the FBI for misleading and intentionally and falsifying evidence in the, in, in the pursuit of Donald Trump. So, you know, the FBI thought they were going to come out okay and everyone was spinning it for the first few days that, oh, there was no political bias. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. It depends on what he did. Uh, did the intelligence community have anything to do with the starting this investigation? I don't know. The reason why this investigation is so important is because none of us know the answers. How, but, we, but what we do know is that 
Donald Trump didn't, after all this time, Mueller found and all the millions of dollars spent, there was no conspiracy. It was a conspiracy theory. So we do need to know how did our government get ginned up into, into this miasma well, of investigation that put yeah. that paralyzed our country for two years. Yeah, I mean, we got a little bit of that from the Horowitz report. We know the Durham report is going to be much more expansive. We'll yes. get more answers, we think. All right, panel, stick around. Leslie, we'll kick off with you next. We're going to talk about who scored, who floundered, the key moments of tonight's debate. Our winners and losers next. How do you answer top economists who say taxes of this magnitude would stifle growth and investment. Oh, they're just wrong. Would you be willing to sacrifice some of that growth, even knowing potentially that it could displace thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of blue collar workers in the interest of transitioning to that greener economy? The answer is yes. Hmm. Okay, time now for some more debate winners and losers with our two winners. Let's bring back our panel, <laughs> Leslie Marshall and Mark Thiessen. Leslie, kick us off. Well, my winner is, Mark, no fainting, no faces. Uh, my winner is Joe Biden. Mm. And the reason my winner is Joe Biden is because, honestly, tonight I thought, look, Democrats, number one on their list of what they want, their priority, is a, a candidate that can beat Donald mm -hmm. Trump. Joe Biden tonight was woke. I think it was the strongest debate that he's had. I think when it came to foreign policy, I think when, it, no, I think when it came to foreign policy, and I think when he did things like, Bernie, put your hand down, I could see him doing things like that with Trump. And I think when he called out uh, Bernie, Elizabeth Warren on numbers, and, and, I, and I think when he spoke to his experience, I thought he was actually very strong tonight. I thought it was the strongest, and I think that is the reason that he's leading. He was the Joe Biden that people people actually were uh, nominating, if you will, in the polls. Okay. And, and do you want my loser now? Yeah, or do you let's want, hear it. Okay. Yeah. My, my loser was nobody. Oh. There was not a loser on that stage. I thought everybody had strengths. Of course, everybody's going to have a weak, weakness or two. I thought everybody gave a strong performance tonight. And but it's it, it's what I saw was integrity, and and that's what many Democrats feel is lacking uh, coming out of the White House. We we saw a terrible tweet in the past 24 hours and, and comments by the president on on a dead man who served our nation and, and married to a, a sitting congresswoman. And and I didn't see that. Oh yes, there were attacks on each other, but I just didn't see that. Um, I, I saw a lot of uh, tough questions. I saw intelligent answers, and I just didn't see any hmm. losers on that stage. All right, Mark, something tells me you've located at least one for your analysis. So why don't you give us your winner and well, loser? Well, Leslie and I are a perfect pair tonight because so I agree with her that Joe Biden was the mm. winner because he's the front runner and he didn't stumble. Uh, and people are saying it was his best debate. Chris Cuomo said on another net on that other network, he stayed alert the entire time. I mean, that's not that's not a very <laughs> high bar, but uh, but he hit it. Uh, so Joe Biden is the winner. But and my looter loser is everybody on the stage. Oh. <laughs> and, oh. and I'll tell you why. You guys are a because mirror image of each other. I know exactly. Because Joe Biden and and uh, Pete Buttigieg and Andrew Yang and all the Democrats signed up for this crazy idea that the economy is only working for billionaires and millionaires, but not for ordinary Americans. Joe Biden said the middle class is getting crushed. No, they are not. The the the, the as a uh, poll just last week, the uh, Quinnipiac poll, 57 percent of Americans say that their financial personal yeah. financial situation has gotten better since Donald Trump got elected. This summer, uh, the uh, there was a there was a poll the uh, the Mar Harris poll asked, are, is, is the economy working for you personally? Well, two thirds of Americans said yes in every demographic group, super majorities, non whites, people without a college education, independents, urban voters, small town voters, rural voters. The only people who disagreed, who, the, the majority disagreed, were Democratic women and people who are super liberal. So inside the liberal bubble, uh, which these Democrat, uh, Democratic candidates have had it, the economy is doing badly. But for everybody else, it's doing great. And when you're campaigning against the lived experience of the voters, you're probably not going to win. OK, um, we only have a few seconds left. So a quick answer from you both. Who do you think is the next to leave the field? Leslie, you first. Uh, oh, the next to leave mm -hmm. the field. Hmm. I would mm. I would say uh, uh, who should <laughs> or, uh, or, Your take. Or, or, or who will. OK, um, quickly. I, I'm going to say Tom Steyer. I'm going to say mm. Tom Steyer, because if you look at percentage, he's not there. He can okay. keep writing a check. And Tom quickly, Steyer. Mark. Yeah, probably star. The one I hope is not is Andrew Yang, because I really like Andrew Listen, Yang. He, I wouldn't I, vote I, I for him, but him. I'd love to have a beer with him. I know, and he seems like he's having a great time, just like you two. Leslie and Mark, thank you Thanks. both very much.